All right, in this region's chemistry video, uh, we're going to do numbers 11 through 17 of this uh, 2013 January region's exam. So for number 11, uh, it says, what, what is STP? So this, as long as you just memorize what STP is, you're good for this question. And actually, if you look at your reference table, that, that actually tells you what STP is. So this is just straight off the reference table. Uh, can you uh, look up a couple numbers? Uh, so this should really be easy points here. Uh, the, the, the key here is to pay attention to these units. Uh, if you look at the reference table, uh, STP is 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere. So those are two of uh, the units for STP. So uh, some of the other units we have here, Kelvin, so 0 Celsius would be 273 Kelvin, and then 1 atmosphere would be 101.3 kilopascals. So uh, we just gotta watch our units here, uh, see which ones match up with the units for STP that are given to us on the reference table. Uh, so it's not 101.3 atmospheres, uh, it's not uh, <clears throat> one kilopascal, it's one atmosphere, uh, it's not 101.3 Kelvin. So they've got a bunch of the similar numbers here, you can kinda tell they're trying to trick you here. Uh, just watch your units and it's 101.3 kilopascals and uh, 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius. That would be answer choice 3. So again, just straight off the reference tables there should be a pretty simple question. For number 12, which statement about an atom of an element identifies an element? Well, the atom has one proton. Remember, a proton is what defines what an element is. So uh, if it has one proton, that means it must be hydrogen. Uh, if an atom has two neutrons, that could really be uh, a couple different elements. It could be uh, helium, it could be uh, lithium. Uh, there's a, Remember, different isotopes have different numbers of neutrons. So neutrons do not tell us, if we're trying to see what identifies the element, what makes it what it is, it can't be the number of neutrons because that varies uh, based on the different isotopes. Uh, the sum of the number of protons and neutrons is three. Again, that could be different uh, isotopes of the same uh, different isotopes of different elements uh, they could both have a uh, total mass number here from the protons and neutrons of three so again if the neutrons are involved and they can vary that doesn't uh, dis definitively tell us what element something is uh, and the same thing here the difference between the number of neutrons and protons is one again that we, if we vary the number of neutrons we could get a difference of one for a bunch of different elements so the key here is the number of protons is what defines what an element is so that's what's going to identify the element all right so then for number 13 here a substance is something that is basically uh, one uniform whole. So substance, you want to think something that is a uniform whole. So this is something that you can express with a single chemical formula. So if it's a substance, uh, it could be CH4, that would be methane. It could be, uh, let's say, hydrogen. Uh, it could be, um, let's pick another element, uh, lithium. <laughs> All of these would be substances. Uh, right, because it's just one uh, uniform whole that can be expressed as one single chemical formula. Uh, so a substance, it could be an element, that would be something like lithium, or it could be a compound, that would be something like methane. So either way, it has to be expressed as one chemical formula. So a solution here, a solution is made up of the solvent and the solute, that's not a single substance, that's multiple substances together. And same thing with a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture. They're both going to be made up of multiple parts that are multiple uh, formulas and therefore not going to be a single uniform whole that can again be expressed uh, by one chemical formula. So for 14 here, an element that is malleable, a good conductor, and reacts with oxygen, uh, that would be classified as a metal. So these are some of the characteristics of metals here. Uh, malleable, if you think of aluminum foil or even like a thin piece of uh, steel or any, any type of metal you can imagine, they're, they're malleable, they're something that we can uh, bend or in, in shape as long as they're not too uh, thick and strong. Uh, good conductor of electricity, that's another quality of a metal. Uh, again, lightning rods made up of metal. Uh, you don't want to go hold up uh, your golf club uh, in the middle of a thunderstorm because it's all, all that metal is going to conduct electricity, right? And reacts with oxygen, so this would be uh, an example of rust. So uh, the rust equation forming, uh, if we have something like iron oxide, right? 
that would create uh, rust. So these are, these are all properties of metals here. Some of the other things it says here, noble gases, non-metals, these don't make sense because they're not malleable. Uh, they're not good conductors of electricity. Noble gas isn't going to react with anything. So really, uh, just know your properties of metals, and that's how you kind of come up with the answer for 14 here. So some of the forms of energy that we have. Uh, chemical energy, we should all know that chemical energy is a thing after taking a, a year of chemistry. Uh, so chemical energy, uh, thermal energy is another type of energy, and electromagnetic is a third type of energy. So some of the things here that aren't types of energy, exothermic is not a type of energy, that's just describing whether energy is being absorbed or released. Same thing with endothermic here, also describing whether energy is being absorbed or released. And then temperature. Temperature is not energy, it is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. So this is not a form of energy. Uh, but again, all three of these types here, chemical, thermal energy, thermal energy, enthalpy, heat, right, uh, like we talked about, and uh, electromagnetic energy as well. If we think about the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, we talked about in uh, questions one through five, uh, how we emit uh, light spectra, that's based on electromagnetic waves. So uh, the answer here to all three of these are types of energy. For 16, the total amount of heat required to vaporize a gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. This is the definition of the heat of vaporization because we're trying to vaporize it at standard conditions here and one gram of the substance so this is going to require 2260 joules this is uh, you can look straight off your reference table these properties of water it says uh, the HV value is 2260 and the units here would be joules per gram so this is uh, this heat of vaporization value tells us how much energy how many joules it requires to vaporize one gram of whatever substance, in this case water. Uh, so this is again just a definition of the heat of vaporization. But again this value, don't have to memorize it, is just straight off of your reference table. And 17, this has to do with collision theory. So we talked about collision theory, whereas if we want uh, elements to react with each other, we need the molecules to collide with uh, proper orientation and energy. So this is again uh, as we described, effective collisions. So effective collisions between reactant particles, the answer choice here is going to be three. If we look at some of these other answer choices, don't make a whole lot of sense. Standard temperature and pressure, no, because reactions can occur at a lot of different temperatures. We don't need uh, STP for a reaction to occur. That would be pretty ludicrous and the world wouldn't be in existence right now. Uh, a catalyst is not necessary for a chemical reaction to occur. Uh, in some cases it is, but uh, in, in most cases it's not. Uh, so a catalyst, remember, just makes a reaction go faster. It's not required for uh, a reaction to occur. And an equal number of moles of reactants and products, that would mean that everything always has to uh, react in the same ratios, but uh, based on if we have, let's say, uh, the formula to make up water from its parts, and we balance this out, this would be two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule making two water molecules. So this would be two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. If, if we had an equal number of moles of both of them, uh, we could still make the reaction go, but we'd have some excess left over. So remember, with limiting reagent, uh, that's, that's basically telling us there's going to be some leftover unless we have a uh, perfect ratio of these to react. Uh, so an equal number of moles of reactants and products is not necessarily uh, needed to make a chemical reaction go. All right, in the next video, we'll do the next column of problems, uh, whatever numbers that is, it should be 18 through 24. All right, I'll see you in the next video.